Hey everyone, I'm the Tailorette, and today I'm going to show you how I make my own Civil War sleeves custom made. To start, I'm using one of my favorite patterns from Laughing Moon, and I decided to use the sleeve pattern that is View B. See link below, I have the link to this pattern of where you can purchase it. I absolutely recommend this pattern for many reasons. And I pulled out the fabric and I laid it out, the pattern piece, and what I'm basically going to do is only use the upper part of the sleeve. So that is why I didn't put the whole sleeve on the fabric. So here I'm cutting it out and I am going to fold it over so that I can get an even cut. I'm cutting it a little bit shorter, about five or six inches. And now I'm going to cut two pieces of white fabric. I'm going to use these two pieces to actually baste to the actual pink fabric. So here I am pinning it together. And then I just baste it about a quarter inch from the edge and it becomes one piece. Now that my pieces are basted together, I am now folding it long ways and I'm doing a French seam. So see my video below on how I do that for my seams. And now we're ready to sew the sleeves into the sleeve holes. And here I am pinning it together. And I actually sewed it together on the machine. I didn't show that part, um, but I have. Now my, both my sleeves sewn on and I'm measuring to see where I want the ruffles to be. And so I think I figured I would make the ruffles about two and a half, three inches. So I accounted for a seam allowance and I'm cutting down the trim of the sari because I want to use the trim instead of the middle of the sari with the medallions. So that way it gives it a little bit more contrast than just all of it being the same fabric on the bodice. And here I'm folding it over because I'm going to do one big cut with my rotary cutter that I love to use with my Omnigrid ruler as well that I just put on there. And it looks like I am cutting it at three and a quarter inches and I'm slicing it down, which ends up being a huge long strip so that I don't have to keep cutting out strips, which is really nice. So then I actually took it to the dress and I was experimenting with the length to see if I actually liked it. So I roughly pinned it on. It's not gonna look like this at all. And there we have it. All the layers are together and I just tucked it underneath the bottom and that bottom part will be chopped off eventually. But this is a rough draft, so don't take this too seriously. So, but yeah, that is the general look of the sleeve. And here I'm actually doing a rolled hem on the iron. I have a tutorial on how I do that. I do it a faster way on another video, but I did not have my other machine out, so I'm doing it the long way here. But I have a faster way, see link below on my tutorial on how to do a rolled hem. And then I am working on the gathering stitches. I am doing a large stitch about a size four on my Juki and doing it a quarter inch from the edge all the way down the long strip. And then once I finished stitching that, I did another stitch right next to it, about just under a quarter inch. And here I'm taking the sleeve back out because I realized, whoops, I needed to put the ruffle in with the sleeve. Here I'm gathering the ruffle, ready to getting it ready to put on the sleeve. But then I took it over to the iron because I don't like how lumpy it is. Y'all know how I do not like my gathers to look lumpy. So I'm pressing it down and making it flat so that it doesn't look so tacky and frilly. This will give it that nice, crispy, clean look. And so here I'm folding over under the end. I'm folding the end under and pinning it to the sleeve seam on the inside and pinning it all the way around, just basically pinning it to the edge. No major technique about this. And then after I finished pinning it all the way around that edge, put in my last pin and that is it. It's ready to be stitched on the sewing machine. So I took it to the machine and just did a basting stitch because it's going to be officially stitched into the sleeve hole later. So basically I sew from the inside. It's just much easier to sew on a machine like that. And I'm adding this second row and I'm basically adding it so that it's 5 eighths underneath the top ruffle so that it doesn't show the actual seam and the gathering stitches on top. And so here I'm pinning it down and getting ready to stitch it on the sewing machine and do that all the way around. Just keep checking to make sure it's underneath that ruffle there and then take it over to the machine afterwards. But first I'm checking to see what it looks like now that it's stitched or pinned on. 
So I'm tucking in the extra excess of the sleeve that I plan on cutting off and I'm pleased with it. I love the look of this sleeve. It's exactly what I was going for. So I decided to just trim off the extra excess of the sleeve sticking out at the bottom and I plan on hemming that underneath. So I just folded it under, pressed it down, and then I took it over the sewing machine and stitched it in place so that it's a nice clean edge underneath. Even though it doesn't show, it's nice to have things nice and tidy underneath. And then ready to actually put it into this armhole there. So it's going to be a part of the bodice now and I just basically pin it on two sides of the sleeve hole, one at the bottom and then one pin up at the top of the sleeve and I stretch it out, kind of not stretch it, but pull it tight so that it's nice. You can see how it fits nice and easy and you just pin it evenly inside because it looks like it might be slightly like a quarter inch wider, but yeah, once that's all pinned in place, then I can just stitch it down and it'll end up being the way I want it to be. And here I am stitching it, going from the inside of the sleeve. I don't take, because I can't take my bottom part of the machine off, this is how I stitch my sleeves in place. Take it to the iron, and I, using that same technique that I've used several times before in other videos, is I put a cotton cloth over the material and turn the iron on high, and I'm pressing the sleeve seam to the inside of the bodice, and it's done. That is what they both look like. I finished the other one and I put them both in there. The other one was made the same exact way. And that is how I make my sleeves for my Civil War ball gowns. And the project doesn't start there. So hit the subscribe button because the next video is on how I end up finishing off this bodice and I am going to make the skirt as well. So you'll want to hit that subscribe button, like this video, and I will see you all next time. Y'all, if you heard a bird in the background, this is where it was coming from. That is Mango. So you'll be hearing a lot more of him more often these days.